Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll get Roku stock, the streaming giant that continues to decline. Over the past 6 months alone, the stock is down over 62.04%. Over the past 5 days alone, the stock has fallen 15.76% in value. And despite a swift rebound recently of 13.38%, the question naturally becomes, with such a massive, massive decline recently, is the stock now undervalued? And is there a buying opportunity present? Well today, I'm going to be answering that for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors. It's financial strength, profitability, growth and management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Roku is a buy, hold or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screen here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Roku. How financially strong is Roku as a company, and how likely is it that Roku can endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at the financial strength metrics, and of course, when assessing the financial strength of any large company, there's really one key metric we focus on, and that's the cash to debt ratio. The cash the business currently has on hand to meet their short-term and long-term debts outstanding. And the current cash debt ratio for Roku is 4.11, indicating a massive degree of cash on hand relative to their debt. This cash to debt ratio indicates that for every dollar of debt on Roku's balance sheet, they have $4.11 in cash to meet that debt obligation, so a very advantageous financial position. This cash to debt ratio indicates that if Roku's management so desired, they could instantaneously put on all the debt outstanding on their balance sheet and still retain the equivalent of $3.11 relative to that one to one ratio to continue to reinvest and build out their business going forward. So a very, very favorable cash to debt position. When you combine this favorable cash to debt position with the massive amounts of free cash flow being generated by Roku's core streaming services on a daily basis, revenue coming in consistently on a monthly basis, you begin to realize just how financially strong Roku is as a company. The great degree of financial strength provided by both this cash in hand and operational cash flows is accentuated by the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 8.83, indicating a large degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default in the event of a downturn. Despite the potential growth struggles associated with Roku's business right now on a financial strength basis by virtue of both that cash on hand and operational cash flows being generated by their business, the financial stability of Roku is fairly impressive. But that's simply the financial strength of Roku. Now, let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable Roku is as a company. So if we come over here to profitability, and of course, when assessing the profitability of any large firm, there's really four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins. Number two, the net margins. Number three, the returns on equity. And number four, the returns on assets. So let's come over here and start off with the margins. You can see operating margins of 8.5% and net margins of 8.77%. Both fairly good. On an industry basis and historically for Roku, these margins are fairly good. They indicate that for every dollar of revenue that comes into Roku's business, they retain about 9% of that as pure profit. So across the entertainment industry, a fairly healthy degree of profitability, and throughout Roku's history as a business, these are some of the very best margins they've achieved. Although relative to other businesses in different industries, these margins may appear fairly low, given the underlying growth nature of Roku as a business, and the potential for margin expansion going forward, the low nature of these margins relative to other businesses is of little concern. Going forward, given the low capital cost nature of Roku's underlying business, I believe over time the business could experience significant margin expansion. Margin expanding all the way up to 15-20% to over the long term for the company, so although net margins may appear low at present, over the long term there is room for growth, making the company a fairly advantageous bet on a net margins basis. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets to get an idea of how Roku's management is allocating their capital. So if we come down here to returns on equity and returns on assets, and of course, when assessing a wonderful business, we're typically looking for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So now let's see what Roku's producing. Returns on equity of 10.29%, returns on assets of 6.97%, both below our 20% target. Although below our 20% target, returns on equity of 10.29%, once again on an industry basis, is fairly impressive, and once more historically for the company, is some of the best returns on equity they've ever achieved. Returns on equity at this level indicates a moderate degree of underlying quality in Roku's business model, and also a fair degree of management competency. The management within Roku are obviously allocating their capital with only a moderate degree of competency. Returns on equity of 10.29% for a growing company is neither outstanding nor underwhelming, just fairly standard returns on equity for the business at this time. And although returns on assets is a lot lower, returns on assets are only 6.97%, these returns on assets are understandable given the underlying growth nature of the business. Naturally, as Roku invests aggressively to build out its operations and expand its revenues, lower returns on assets are made, and that's completely understandable given the growth phase in which the business is residing. Historically for the companies, these are still very impressive returns on assets, 
and also on an industry basis within the upper tier of the entertainment industry. So on a profitability basis, with room for net margin expansion going forward, fairly healthy returns on equity and assets, the profitability of Roku, given the underlying growth phase of the company, is absolutely fine. So on a financial strength basis, they're well positioned by virtue of a large amount of cash on hand, and consistent cash flows flowing in from their operations, and on a profitability basis, they're doing fairly well. But now let's get an idea of how much Roku is worth as a company. Because although it may be a wonderful business, if it's not trading at a fair valuation, then buying into the stock right now could lead to losses in the short to medium term. So let's come down here and have a look at some basic valuation ranks. And of course, when assessing a business based upon these simple valuation ranks, there's a lot of different ratios we can use to assess the business. We've got the PB ratio, the PS ratio, the quick ratio, current ratio, cash ratio, the EV to EBITDA ratio, all these different fancy fancy ratios but when it comes to assessing a business based upon these simple ratios there's really only one i use and that's the pe ratio the price to earnings ratio and the current price to earnings ratio for roku is 73.43 indicating a massive degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward based upon this high pe investors in the broader market believe that roku can continue to grow at a fairly high rate going forward over the next 10 to 15 years. Growth rates anywhere from 30 to 35% on both the earnings per share basis and free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade, and that's what this elevated PE signifies. Although historically for the company, this isn't the highest PE they've ever had, it still indicates a massive degree of growth priced into the stock going forward. Whether or not this high PE indicates the company is over or undervalued is up for debate. What we are gonna do later on is run a full DCF analysis breaking down the company's earnings per share and free cash flow on a more granular level to give you a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and exactly how much you should be paying per share for the company. So keep watching for that one. But before we get started on our DCF analysis, I want to break down some basic financial data associated with Roku. So if we come over here, we can see the revenue and net income for Roku between 2015 and 2021. You can see back in 2015, revenue was around 319 and negative net income of negative 40. And then in 2021, revenue of 2,764 and positive net income of 242. So you can see massive, massive growth over the past few years, massive growth in both the revenue and the income basis for the company, indicating a large degree of management competency within Roku's business. Not only stimulating consistent revenue growth over time, but also turning around negative net income into positive net income in the space of only five to six years. Very, very impressive. Combining Roku, a business with positive secular trends around the company, with a highly competent management team running the business, is a formula for a very attractive investment. Coming over here to the cash to debt ratio of the company over time, you can see a similar exponential trend. Over the past six years, more and more cash being accumulated on Roku's balance sheet. You can see back in 2015, cash on hand of 75 and debt of 15. And then in 2021, cash on hand of 2,146 and debt of 521. So massive, massive amounts of cash on hand being built up on their balance sheet over time, and also a fairly small degree of debt being utilized relative to their cash on hand. With such a massive amount of cash on hand relative to their debt, being able to pay down their debt obligations instantaneously, and then utilize those additional operational cash flows to stimulate additional growth within the business going forward. The small amount of debt on hand poses virtually no debt-related risk for the company, and leaves them with a high degree of financial stability and agility going forward. When it comes to the financial stability of Roku, a very financially stable and well-entrenched business. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see fairly low returns on capital, in fact, very, very low returns on capital over the past decade. Returns on capital of negative 96% in 2015, and then positive returns on capital, finally, of 14% in 2021. So with such low returns on capital over the past five years, does it mean that Roku's been failing as a business? That revenue has been flatlining, that hasn't been growing at all? Not at all. What these low returns on capital are indicative of is a growing business. Naturally, as Roku invests aggressively and builds out its operations, lower returns on capital are made, and that's completely understandable given the inherent growth nature of the business. Low returns on capital tied to growing businesses can be seen across a variety of industries and in a number of sectors. These low returns on capital shouldn't cause concern for investors as much as be symbolic of a growing company investing aggressively to expand its business. Going forward, I would like to see improvements to returns on capital, long run returns on capital for the company around that 14 to 15% range over the next 10 years for the business, but right now, given the inherent growth nature of the company and the rapid growth phase in which it finds itself, these lower returns on capital are absolutely understandable and completely fine going forward over the next three to four years. So that's some basic financial data associated with Roku, the PE ratio to give you an idea of what the company may be worth, and also some profitability and financial strength data to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we really want to understand what Roku is worth as a company and how much we should be paying for each individual share of the stock, then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. And as Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. And that's exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in. And after that, it's translating to free cash flow 
the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. And if we come over here, we can see the earnings per share growth rate. So the past 10, 5, and 1 year period, unfortunately, given the inconsistencies of Roku's growth over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period, we don't have growth rates at all. Not on a 10 year basis, not on a 5 year basis, and not even on a 1 year basis. So with no growth data over the past 10, 5, or 1 year period, I believe it would be reasonable to utilize a growth rate more in line with the company's revenue trend line over the past 10 years, given the lack of growth data on an earnings per share basis available. And the company's revenue trend line on a 10 year basis has been around 26.6%. So being slightly more conservative on that number, we're going to utilize a growth rate of 25% going forward over the next decade on an earnings per share basis. This 25% rate of growth takes into account the highly positive secular trends around Roku's business, with the ever-increasing prevalence of streaming, and the potential for meaningful and consistent growth going forward over the next decade, but also a substantially lower growth rate relative to our one-year free cash flow and EBITDA growth rates, acknowledging the massive amounts of growth the company has already experienced, and the highly, highly competitive nature of the streaming industry going forward. Slightly lower than our 26.6% revenue growth rate over the past 10 years, a 25% rate of growth on earnings per share basis over the next decade would appear justified for the company. So utilizing that 25% rate of growth going forward over the next 10 years, utilizing our discount rate of 8%, 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market, and thus a fair rate of which to discount our cash flows, then our earnings per share figure of $1.71, taken down here for a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target for Roku of $101.96 signifying about 29 to 30% short-term downside to the stock, and that the stock is trading substantially above its intrinsic value with a significant degree of overvaluation at present. Based upon our earnings per share valuation, Roku stock leaves little opportunity for value investors, not long-term growth investors. But that is simply an earnings per share valuation. Now, let's have a look at a free cash flow valuation to give us an idea of how much those earnings are translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here, we're gonna switch over to free cash flow. If we come down here, we can see the free cash flow growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period once again. Unfortunately, given the inconsistencies of free cash flow growth over the past 10 and 5 years, we don't have growth rates for those two time periods. What we do have is a massive, massive 1 year growth rate of 149.9%. So massive, massive growth on a free cash flow basis over the past 12 months, of course inherently tied to the increased demand for Roku services during the pandemic. So with such a massive, massive free cash flow growth rate over the past one year, do I believe free cash flow can continue to grow for Roku in excess of 149% every single year for the next decade? Do I think they'll keep compounding free cash flow at around 150% every single year for the next 10 years? Absolutely not. That growth rate is far, far too high. And I think once again, given the inherent, I think once again, given the inherent intertwinement of free cash flow and earnings per share growth on Roku's balance sheet going forward, it's naturally a very free cash flow accretive business. I believe a more reasonable growth rate for the company going forward over the next decade would likely be in line with the same earnings per share growth rate we utilized within the previous calculation. So once again, we're going to utilize a growth rate of 25% on a free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade. This 25% rate of growth takes into account the massive potential for additional free cash flow accretion on Roku's balance sheet going forward over the next decade. As Roku's business matures more and more and more, more free cash flow will become accretive on their balance sheet and become prevalent on their financial statements. However, this lower growth rate relative to the one year growth rate of 150% also acknowledges the massive amounts of growth the company has already experienced and also denotes the highly competitive nature of the streaming industry. So utilizing a growth rate of 25% going forward over the next 10 years on a free cash flow basis, once again, with our discount rate of 8%, then our free cash flow per share figure of $1.33, taken down here for a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target for Roku of $79.30, signifying even more potential short term downside to the stock, and that the stock right now is well, well above its intrinsic value, creating a substantial degree of downside potential for investors and leaving Roku stock as a very unadvantageous buy at this time. Both value investors and long term growth investors would stay away from Roku based upon our free cash flow valuation. So as you can see on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears as if Roku is substantially overvalued at this time, trading well above its intrinsic value and thus not a very advantageous buy. But which of these valuations makes more sense for Roku? Which of these valuations gives us a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and exactly how much we should be paying per share for the company? Well, given the inherent underlying growth nature of Roku as a company, it's very much a growing business, compounding its revenues and net income at a consistent rate going forward over the next decade. And given investors and the market's tendency more broadly to value growing companies based upon their earnings per share growth rather than their free cash flow accretion, I'd be more inclined to utilize our earnings per share valuation as my current valuation for the company going forward. 
Investors tend to focus solely on earnings per share growth when valuing growing companies and tend to reserve free cash for valuations for more mature companies no longer growing at a consistent rate. So taking that into account, we're going to utilize my earnings per share valuation as my current valuation for the company, and thus my current valuation for Roku stock is going to be $101.96, signifying about 29 to 30% short-term downside of the stock and that the stock is well, well above its intrinsic value at present, leaving very, very little opportunity for value investors nor long-term growth investors. Based upon a valuation right now, Roku stock does not appear to be a buy. Despite the unappealing valuation at present, and taking into account the highly competitive nature of the streaming industry going forward, I believe Roku can continue to perpetuate consistent and meaningful growth going forward over the next decade. A growth rate of around 25% over the next 10 years would appear justified for the company, but right now this massive degree of overvaluation is very, very off-putting, and Roku stock once more for me right now is not a buy. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed valuation of Roku stock, a company with a great degree of financial strength by virtue of a large amount of cash on hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from their operations, profitability of a healthy extent with net margins of 8.77%, understandable returns on equity of 10.29%, and fairly good returns on assets of 6.97%, taking into account the underlying growth nature of the business. The company unfortunately appears to be trading substantially above its intrinsic value, leaving little opportunity for value investors nor long-term growth investors. Despite my belief that the company can continue to grow owing forward over the next decade, the massive degree of overvaluation in the stock right now is very off-putting, and for me right now, Roku stock does not appear to be a buy. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you learned something more about Roku as a company or as a stock, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, if there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.